Good afternoon. We are here with Jeff Brady at the uh, Sexual Medicine Society of North America meeting. Dr. Brady is an adult and pediatric uh, reconstructive urologist. Uh, we knew each other when he was my resident many years ago. We caught up and he told me a couple of really interesting stories, one of which is that you had an illness. What was your illness? What did you have? So I developed uh, aortic insufficiency and had a, uh, my aortic valve replaced in uh, January of 2015. Uh, developed from infective endocarditis. So I became a patient, had an aortic valve replacement, and uh, now my kids think I have a bionic heart. Had you ever been sick before? Uh, other than the occasional cold for my kids, no, not, no significant illnesses. Right, so fully functional, able to exercise, able to run around the OR, take care of patients, no problems. So the summer of 2014, I did the Lake Placid Ironman. I've competed, oh, wow. I've competed in the uh, Half Ironman Championships. I exercise daily. I'm, uh, I'm pretty active. And when your aortic valve uh, became infected, how did that affect your physical function? So I thought I just had a cold, like my kids gave me a bad cold, but uh, eventually what made me find it was my exercise tolerance decreased significantly, so I couldn't run. Uh, ultimately found out that, uh, you know, what, what problems that I was having. And, and the only real remedy for you was to have it replaced. You had to have surgery. Right. So, so if you get infective endocarditis, you can have a treat with antibiotics if you catch it early. Okay. Uh, and it's a less virulent bacteria. You have a more virulent bacteria and it affects and destroys the valve and the valve needs to be replaced. And so what was that like? I mean, you're a surgeon, you're used to being on this side of the bed and all of a sudden you're finding yourself on a gurney and stretchers and hallways, operating rooms. What was it like? Did you learn anything you didn't know about the patient experience? I learned I don't want to be a patient if I can help it. Uh, so I, I you know, try to stay as healthy as possible. But it, it was interesting to be on the other side of the, of the curtain, so to speak. Uh, you, when you're a patient, you lose control. And we're used to being in control of what happens. and. Mm -hmm. You know what tests get ordered and seeing results, and uh, you know a lot of that control is was uh, no longer in my control. But um, you know there are even subtle, small things that make a big difference for patient care. If you uh, you know I was left in a hallway for a half hour, and you wonder if they forgot about you or didn't forget about you, and right. uh, so a lot of things that you don't really realize happens to patients. Uh, you, you find out what happens when you become the patient. And, and, and do you think it sensitized you? I mean, you were always uh, a thoughtful and empathetic person. I mean, I've, I've seen you with patients, but did it change you in any way in, in terms of how you're behaving now as a doctor? Um, I think I was that way before. I think now I try to, to even my teams, I work with a team, and we try to make sure the patients can a ask any questions they want and have them understand when they're going to have a procedure or spend time in the hospital, what what their expectations should be. And I think if they understand that and they get treated, um, you know, like people should be treated, they're more comfortable with, with that process. Speaking of the way people should be treated, we touched on the fact that you had uh, an infection with a very rare sort of bacterium. Uh, it's called cat scratch fever uh, in layman's terms. Uh, and that the real experts on this illness really are veterinarians and not humans, right? And so you, in fact, in all your research, wound up interacting with a veterinarian along with your regular human, um, human doctors. Um, and it, so back to the issue of how we should be treated. You know, in, in, in our society, in the United States of 2015, if I want my doctor to get an appointment, I just call up the vet and get one for tomorrow. And there's no questions asked, and he can have a half hour, an hour, whatever he needs. But when my partner at Sergio wants to get herself an appointment, um, it may be six months, you know, under the current financial arrangements. Uh, so, you know, we sometimes kind of kid around and we say that at Sergio, we're trying to raise the surface of standards to that of, of, of what our dogs get, um, which is sad, right? It's, it's funny, but it's really sad. Uh, do you have any thoughts on your, you're the only person I know who's ever been indirectly treated by a veterinarian, lucky you, right? Yeah. Um, any thoughts on, on those standards? Uh, to, is, is his approach to the clinical care different from what you've seen? I realize it's a very small sample, but is there a difference in the approach? Well, I think, any, <clears throat> I think anybody who's in, in health care, whether it's for animals or, or, or humans, uh, I think they have a certain level of compassion and care, and you're going to have it all across all spectrums. I think this person is at North Carolina State, uh, at Bright Church is his name. Uh, he is a tremendous asset to me. Now, he didn't treat me as we talked. Um, uh, directly, but indirectly gave me 
ideas of how a you know you treat a Bartonella infection, uh, and worked with my infectious disease doctor to make that that uh, that process easier. Um, but again, I think it's you know even for patients trying to find you know can you see somebody in a timely fashion, can they answer your questions, and then can they treat you as an individual and not a, as cookbook medicine. At least for me, that's that's what I found fortunately with my physicians. Um, I think that's what's right. most important. Well, I'm sorry that you were sick, and I'm, uh, I'm very glad that you got better again. And I think a lot of people are going to be interested in what that feels like uh, to a doctor to lose control, to be stuck on a gurney for a half hour wondering if they've forgotten about you, uh, and appreciate you sharing the story. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Okay. Talk to you.